Hello everyone, and welcome back to Planet Zoo and our marvelous modded map here in Redwood National Park, where we are doing our best to kind of recreate a little bit of what I hope to see when Chips and I go to Yellowstone, which hopefully we're either on our way there or we have just arrived and are having a good time. Uh, and I will be coming back with lots of memories, hopefully a whole bunch of cool pictures, and maybe some vlogs for you guys. And I am really hoping we'll have a chance to see some bison, which apparently we're not gonna see that by because he is being taken away somewhere. Oh, it's Lulu! Oh, she's pregnant and she's also a little sick. Oh, I'm glad that we currently have our wonderful bald eagle researcher, Sunny, taking good care of Lulu. Off they go. All right, hopefully that will work out okay. But last time we ended up like leaving this amazing new fantasy forest that we are building and I am hoping to fill with like foxes and marmots, maybe a, a like very noble elk or somebody who could stand over here. That would be really fun. But we have currently left this gorgeous fantasy and uh, we need to take good care of our bison because they are kind of one of the backbones of what we hope to have here in our wonderful national park. And I think it'd be really fun to get like a Jeep tour set up over here, expand the bison area and let people kind of come over and be able to like have a little Jeep tour to see a big bison zone. What I want to do with sort of like this whole section is turn it into a little bit of what Lamar Valley supposedly looks like in the pictures. And if we're going to do that, A, it needs to be a lot bigger and B, we need to give it a lot more attention. Uh, and C, I, I'm kind of worried about the bison. Like we haven't given them enough attention in my opinion. Um, I, do, I think they're only on like quality one food and we have a whole bunch of babies. We, ha we have a whole bunch of, uh oh. Did we never name the bison? <laughs> I can't believe we never named the bison. I must have been so distracted. Oh my gosh. <laughs> All right, well, let's go through and we're going to name the bison. And we also need to maybe figure out how to move Tyler out of the way because, oh no, our chipmunks are still dying of old age. Rest in peace, little ones. I told you guys they do not live very long. Oh dear, and our geese are maturing, which means, friends, I think we need to go ahead. Uh, and if the geese are already maturing, we probably need to go ahead and put just the majority of them on contraceptives, except for the first four. Like the main, the main group. Let's see, social, doesn't have a current mate. Timothy and Panda will let have more babies. Panda's very tiny, wow. She's apparently a like extra super duper small goose. So Panda, you can also have more, more babies. And then I wonder how long it takes geese in real life to actually find a mate. Because I know with some species of uh, like fowl that way, like some species of bird fowl, you can take up to four years before it, they become mature enough to start looking for mates. Like with species of crane, for instance, it does take like, I think four years at least before a crane is considered old enough to start like looking for a mate of their own. And I think swans might be that way, but I'm not 100% sure. All right, and we'll take Timothy off as well. And then as we have a bunch of maturing little cygnets, we'll kind of make the decision of uh, if some of them should fly the coop or not. So who has matured? So Daisy, Harold, and Flame have all matured. So if we put those guys to the trade center, let's actually see what happens if Harold and Flame... Well, let's just try with Harold first. If we release you to the wild... <gasps> you get a lot of conservation credits for that! You know what? We're gonna go ahead and... As long as they're not like gold star, I think we might release some of these geese to the wild because like they grew up successfully. Yeah, Harold's not gold star either. They grew up successfully in our goose pond next to our little picnic zone. Yeah, Flame's not gold star either. So let's do it. Let's go ahead and we'll have Daisy, Harold, and Flame be released to the wild. And we get some conservation credits for that, yes! I love it! I absolutely love it! We can use those conservation credits to get some rare animals, like maybe a lynx! I would love- oh, maybe we should have a shy little lynx that kind of slinks through this forest. That would be really cool. Alright, but that said, let's come over and name these bison! And then we're gonna go ahead and get to work at making their area a bit bigger. Um, and I'm gonna need to figure out how I want people to be able to view our bison. Because I do want to have a jeep tour, but I also kind of want there to be a trail that goes this way 
and allows you to like see the whole bison area. We might make like the bison's the bison's valley dip down in here and have like a bridge path, a trail that people can walk um as well as a jeep tour, like the bridge path we might make go like up and like you walk over everybody and the jeep tour you could drive down like with them in the valley. I think that could be really fun because I want people to have lots of ways to just appreciate the valley. Um, and it might be fun to have like a little bridge that follows like a creek or something. Hmm. And to keep multiple males in an area, what we might do is just like separate half of the exhibit with a, a deep creek that the bison can't go over. And hopefully the zookeepers would still be able to refill their food at the back. Or we might just make like multiple exhibits, but we'll have to see. All right, well, let's go ahead and start by making this a lot bigger. So we're actually going to snag some wooden logs. And one day we will replace these wooden logs with something that is vastly more uh, attractive to work with. I, I'll say that much. Let's see. And then come up along the back. There we go. Why not just include that tree? Sure. Hmm. Yeah. We'll make the, the bison valley at least this big to start with. It's kind of reminding me a bit of Vast Horizons in our Sahula Sand Safari. And then we'll go ahead and open it up. Hey! And maybe once we work on this a little bit, we can celebrate by getting one of my favorite animals that I have yet to see in real life. And hopefully we'll see on our trip the pronghorn antelope, which is closer related to a giraffe rather than antelope species. Which is, of course, why I love them, because they're closer related to giraffes. <laughs> Alright, and then we're going to try to make this place look kind of nice. I have a picture of Lamar Valley pulled up right now. And there's sloping hills, because where Lamar Valley currently is, um, I think it like the current Lamar Valley used to be a lake. And the lake was a crater from one of the many explosions that have happened in Yellowstone in the past. And one of the things that Chips and I learned while researching for our trip to Yellowstone is that the reason that you have this quite significant size of flat space between the mountains of Yellowstone and the Teton Mountains, which are to the south of Yellowstone, is because those mountains got obliterated. Like imagine these mountains, right? The Tetons are huge and some of the mountains around Yellowstone are also huge. And so you have chains of these mountains that were created when the tectonic plates that are under Yellowstone collided over millions and millions of years. And then you just suddenly have, like, imagine these mountains on both sides and then just suddenly flat. Just flat. Maybe a few hills, but mostly flat. And you might go, huh, I wonder why the mountain range over there isn't connected to the mountain range over there. The answer is a gigantic explosion! That apparently just like wiped out the mountains and made a bunch of craters and those craters eventually became lakes and the lakes eventually became valleys and basically I'm very excited to see the like very the evidence the the very old evidence of such a, a powerful geological event so it'll be really fun to see Yellowstone for lots of reasons all right let's go ahead and smooth this out a bit so I'm going to make like a few of the sloping hills, but I want them to be soft enough that our bison can still climb them. Here we go. Maybe if I really make that very sloping. And then one of the things we'll put over here though, I'll have a sharper kind of cliff that we'll cover in pines. One of the things that I've noticed when I am doing my research on Yellowstone to prep for going, like reading a lot about the biology, a lot about the ecology, is that um, there's not that many tree species. And that's because it, it has in all like senses of the idea of evolutionary time been quite recent since a whole bunch of these eruptions. So you don't have the sheer diversity of trees that I'm used to seeing living next to the Blue Ridge Mountains, which are one of the oldest mountain ranges in the North American like continent. Uh, oh no! Anya the Red Wolf is about to die of old age? What Anya? No! Oh my gosh! Anya! Oh, that's so sad! What the heck? Oh my goodness! 
So she's she's dying of old age. Oh, we'll have to come back and like check on her in a little bit. And then we'll we'll have to see. Maybe her mate will like wander off into the wild and we'll allow Oh Anya! Oh she had so many babies too. She actually had her last offspring whilst she was pregnant. That's Dina over here. Oh, and I wonder, I think Dina's like a gold star. She is, and she's actually a little older, so it might be time for her to go ahead and, uh, oh dear, the bison are fighting again. Where are you two? We have Tyler versus Dragon! Dragon is 20 years old and he is the current alpha. Tyler is 6 years old, his son, he's a gold quality bison. I think I might let them kind of battle this out for a minute. It could be dangerous, but I think it'll be okay. And they can live for 26 years! Dragon won! Dragon won! And Tyler's okay. Alright, and actually, does the appeal go up from, like, those fights? I, I don't know. Like, I've often wondered that, if the appeal actually goes up from the fights. Oh, Lulu is about to have her baby! Okay, I need to get a move on here. We're gonna put in a bunch of pines. Alright, but yeah, I've just always thought that was kind of interesting that there are not as many tree species as I expect in Yellowstone because... Do these two, maybe some grassland... Eh, not grassland. That's gonna pull up stuff from like... Well, actually, we can sort it by North American continent and probably be okay. There we go. Alright, and some spruce trees at the back. Here we are. Yeah, spruce. We're gonna do a few small spruce trees. It's kind of like this line on the upper ridge. I'm, I'm really like going heavily based on the picture that I'm looking at right now of what Yellowstone kind of looks like. And then we're gonna put caribou moss all over the place to represent some of the grasses. Caribou moss and cowberry bushes. Those should get us most of the way there. We have festive spruces, elm trees, giant cedars, holly trees. Okay, the holly trees actually look pretty good as well, but I don't know if they actually blend in the way I'm hoping. All right, let's see. Oh, these cedars are so pretty, these yellow cedars. All right, we'll put a few of those. They're huge. Oh my goodness. Yeah, we'll put a few of those here at the back. Oh geez. <laughs> and now I've created quite the, the hidden zone where it's gonna be a little harder to see our, our animals now. Uh, holly trees can also be very small. Oh, the festive spruce can be very big. Let's see, let's see. Common ash? No. Like, there's a lot of pines and spruces and cedars in the pictures that I'm looking at. But I need to actually... I have a journal that I got specifically for our trip to Yellowstone. I need to really go through my, my new journal and make notes on what types of tree species I could expect to see. Also, Dina, no! Dina, no! Okay. I think we were successful at actually getting her spayed uh, in, or like on contraceptives in time. But I do think that it might be time for Mint and Hilaire, her parent or her brother and her father, to actually be released to the wild. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And I think one of the fun behind the scenes goals we could try to have with our Redwoods Park is to reach 100,000 conservation credits. We started with a lot of them. And I've been thinking maybe we'll have certain challenges where if we, um, wow, only 25 for a gold quality red wolf, one of the most endangered species out there. Well, that sucks, but we know what, we're doing our part. But I thought that it might be fun to have challenges in the future where sometimes we could lose conservation credits or gain conservation credits or like gain money or lose money from grants, depending on how well our facilities do. We're actually really fine on money right now. All right, we're gonna release those two to the wild. Mint, uh, we're also going to release to the wild. And then Dina, is she considered an elder now? I'm going to take her off contraceptives and I'm going to get Dina a new mate because we're going to monitor this situation very carefully. All right, Mint is actually, he's now the alpha wolf. He's got a lot of star rating. We might actually go ahead and put Mint in the trade center. And then let's come and get any species. Now we're going to look for a red wolf. There we go. All right, let's get Swindle. What a name. So there's Swindle or there's Ivan. 
Um, both, are, both are custom seizures. We'll go with Swindle, and then we will add in a brand new... A brand new red wolf, and hopefully that will work out well. Oh, and our Canadian geese are maturing again! <laughs> Alright! Yeah, I love that idea! We'll try really hard to get to, like, 100,000 conservation credits, and then celebrate by maybe building something special in zoo crafting. Alright, since all of these little ones are maturing... And how long does the Canadian goose live? Let's see. 10 to 24 years. That's a quite the broad range. <laughs> that that may make it a little tricky for me to figure out. Oh, and here's Swindle. Hopefully he will be accepted as a potential mate. Oh, I think we're going to have to release Mint or else he's still going to count as the alpha. So can I not release him to the wild? Return to habitat, quick trade. All right, we're going to quick trade him. Sorry, Mint. There we go. Because otherwise I don't think Swindle will have a chance to be counted as the wild, or as the alpha. But we'll see how that works out. And then with Swindle, we're going to actually name him Odom! After Sally Odom! Welcome, welcome! So Sally, you're actually going to be the sixth red wolf that we have ever had. And hopefully will be Dina's mate. There's no bond formed with a mate just yet. But she is the alpha female, so we'll have to sit back and just see how that works out. And we have one brother held in genetic reserve in case we need him. Alright, meanwhile, Goose Pond! Let's come on down. And if I released these geese to the wild, 503 conservation credits, I will take it. I love it. Ooh, and this is actually looking a lot nicer for our bison too. I really like that we have uh, vastly increased this zone. Uh, but let's go ahead. We're going to change it up a little bit. I'm going to put in some short grass so we can actually see the animals to some extent. And then we're going to mix in some nice... The sand and the dirt would actually look really good for a lot of our bison's zones. So we're going to put that in. And then we're going to do just little patches of soil. We'll make that a little lighter. And I'm just going to continue to try to make this kind of look like the picture that I'm looking at. And then we definitely need some rock for our small pond here. Oh dear. Let's do some softer rock. There we go. And let's actually do some rocks around the mud pits. Oh, that looks so much better. We'll add in some trees around the mud pits. I actually want to expand the mud pits quite a bit because they look so cool. Can I grab another? Oh, we're going to grab another collection of mud pits. And we're just going to plunk them in here. Let's... Yes! Okay, good. That did actually flatten all of this space, which is what I wanted. Um, and then, can we smooth this a little bit? Oh, look at that! Oh, that looks really good! I like it! And we can make like a little cluster of rocks back here. But I wanted another mud pit because they kind of remind me, like I said, of the mud geysers, which is really cool. Alright. And then we're gonna like continue to try to settle this area. Using everybody's favorite, the rocks! And Yellowstone actually kind of has rocks that... Uh, Taiga rocks, Taiga rocks, but also like there's a lot of kind of this yellow looking rock in Yellowstone because you know that's how it kind of got its name Yellowstone. So I think what we might do is we might add a few of these kind of like as decorative cliff pieces. There we go. And let's see, just kind of go a little wild. Oh, how I wish I could actually see what I was doing because the, the light would change, but that's okay. Maybe that'll get fixed by the time I get back home. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and rotate. I also would give my kingdom for... Here, we'll do a line to surface. That's probably gonna make me feel a lot happy about this. For being able to just like, like this. This is actually what I wanted, where you can put the rocks down and they adjust themselves to looking very random. And, and just a little, a wee bit more organic in their placement as a result. A wee bit. Look, I'm, I'm not asking for miracles here. <laughs> All right, and then you can just kind of like shove that rock in there and get a little bit more variety in what you have. And oh, actually these claddings would look really good. Just kind of tucked in here and there. Very nice, very nice. Okay. Oh, and now it's raining. That's fine. 
Okay. Oh, this is so relaxing. I'm telling you guys. Zen sessions with these rocks. Can I can I maybe just yoink these? Oh. This is also a part I love. Where the efforts of one side of your work end up paying off in another spot. The bison are starting to move around a little bit more. We can tilt the rocks back. See, and then you have like a totally different look, even though you're just using the same little bunch of rocks that you put down. Very wonderful. And you could even like grab different chunks of them. So you don't even have to grab all of the rocks that you used. Like just these ones. Come on in. Coming down. Rotate, rotate, rotate. All right. And there we go. Oh, I love it, you guys. No, <laughs> my special rocks. Oh, I didn't push the button in time. Ah, okay. And it looks like one of the bison babies is already like hanging out back with its mom. But this is looking pretty cool. I like this. So one of the things that really kind of differentiates Yellowstone in a lot of ways um, when I look at like pictures of the Lamar Valley are that it's very short grasses. The, the valley itself does not have like a ton of trees in it. Just these kind of, of lines of trees in the vast distance and up along the ridges. Uh, oh, they're fighting again. Until Dragon is an elder, I think we're just going to let them kind of work on that and give them a little bit of a taste of the wild. Um, but what we're going to go ahead and do is one of the things that does make Yellowstone's valley very distinctive are these short grasses. And the caribou moss can actually stand in really well for a lot of that. So let's actually grab both the caribou mosses. Or all of them. Ooh, there's so many to pick from! Excellent! And... There we go. Just kind of like sprinkle them along the area because they look a little bit. Oh, look, our keepers walking around, checking on everything. I like it because they look a little bit like these short sedge grasses that you can see in the valley. So that'll hopefully work out pretty well. Tight little clumps of moss. Why not? And we should probably get a researcher on our bison as well so we can start giving them higher quality food. Because <laughs> just these little sad patches of grass make me kind of sad. <laughs> oh, here, we can cover up. Here, we'll cover up the um, the bedding. I hope the caribou can still use that. Oh dear, well, and now it's a bunch of floating plants. Maybe we won't do that. There we go. And did I say caribou? I meant the bison, not the caribou. All right, a few patches of that here and there. Oh, it always makes me so happy when we can spend some time just focusing on making a nicer exhibit for our, some of our animals. Because the results are just so lovely. Still not as naturalistic as I, I wish it looked. <laughs> it's a skill in progress, friends. Definitely a skill in progress. And something that I can say with a lot of confidence, if you just kind of jump into it with more plants, I think everything is going to be fine. All right, so we are gonna jump into this with a few more plants just for a couple minutes while we have a little time left. Oh, see, oh, plants. Oh, I love you, plants. Already more and more pieces of this feel like, okay, I can live with this now. All right, put a few of you down over here. There, oh, lovely. There we go. And that really helps to soften the awkward edges sometimes where you can see like the rocks poking through things or poking through the ground. All right, there we go. Excellent. Yeah, just a few. There's not a lot of plants in, uh, in the valleys, except grass. <laughs> Which is what all of which is what you know, everybody's there to eat. They show up to come and eat the grass together. All right. And I hope they have enough shelter. That oh, look at how wonderful it is! Now that we just added a few more plants, I love it. Can I sneak in some reeds? Because the other thing would be really nice if I could just get like some of the the reeds like this, 
And we might actually do that in a few places. Yeah, we might actually do this in a few places because that'll be really a great way to sort of show like just the tall grasses that the animals feed on. It's not like the savanna where you see like the savanna tall grasses, but it is a pretty hefty chunk of uh, land. The trick is that these, I don't think a lot of the animals can like walk through this. So the traversable area will disappear the more we put down big chunks like this. However, hopefully we can balance that out with having like the gigantic vibrant huge exhibit. Oh, lovely. And just a couple more, and I am happy as can be. All right, good progress. I feel very much more contented with our bison. Still haven't named them. Need to work on that. And I think they need some more enrichment too. But we're making some pretty good progress and making this look like an amazing, beautiful park. I'm really happy about that. But all right, guys, thank you so much for joining me on this big adventure. If you would like to join us on this and literally thousands more, do please consider subscribing. But most importantly, my friends, stay curious, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.